In our first video on the argument from design, we took a look at the classical versions of the argument, where people had looked around at the world and seen the appearance of order and inferred some design and some intent from the smooth workings of the universe and the apparent purpose that they had been designed for in order to conclude that a God exists, that there must be some intelligent designer. Today we're going to take a look at the modern versions put forth by the intelligent design movement, where they attempt to use mathematics to demonstrate that the universe and life couldn't have come about through natural processes affected by chance, and therefore there must have been a designer. So, what are the odds? So if we're going to be talking about the odds today, we need to have some understanding of odds and probability. How are they calculated? What does it mean? Now don't worry, you don't have to be a mathematician and you don't have to be great at math. I'm neither and I'll be explaining it. What you need to understand is that when we're talking about odds and probability, we're talking about a ratio or a comparison of favorable results to possible results. That's it. What are the odds that I would roll a 1 on a die? Most of us tend to think of a six-sided die and would answer that my odds are one in six. But if all you know is that I rolled a one, you can't calculate the odds. We might be talking about a ten-sided die, or a twelve-sided die, or a twenty-sided die. Without more information, you don't know how many possible outcomes there are. But it's worse than that. There could be multiple ones on the die, which means that you don't know how many favorable results there are either. Given that information, you can't calculate the odds. Let's look at another example. Take a standard 52 card deck with 13 cards in four different suits. If we assume that shuffling the cards sufficiently randomizes them, what are the odds that after dealing all 52 cards into four hands, one person will receive all 13 spades? Well, the number of possible distinct 13 card hands is 635,013,559,600. And only one of those is comprised of all 13 spades. So the odds are 1 in 635,013,559,600 that someone will be dealt all 13 spades. That seems incredibly unlikely, and yet we know that it's possible and that it happens. If you were dealt all 13 spades, it'd be pretty difficult for you to maintain a straight face. That hand immediately leaps out as incredibly unlikely, so much so that you might even suspect trickery. But what are the odds of getting 13 spades? What are the odds of getting any 13 cards? What's the odds of this other hand? It doesn't seem that the odds are the same because that other hand's not significant to us, but the odds are the same. Replace the king of spades with a five of hearts and the odds remain the same. And we could create a house rule that this is now the best hand. Replace a two of spades with a jack of clubs, the odds don't change. The cards are just bits of paper with printing on them, and that printing could change. If we replaced all the symbols that identify rank and suit with something you don't recognize, then those same 13 bits of paper that currently have spades on them would seem no more significant than this hand or any other hand. It's our perception of the odds that changes. 13 spades seems more remarkable because we've imbued that outcome with significance. So with respect to the universe, what are the odds? Well, that's the question that the argument from design proponents in the modern era are trying to answer. The intelligent design proponents are saying, hey, what are the odds that a universe like ours could come into existence? Now, as far as I can tell, this is something that you can't calculate. I think they've made a number of foundational mistakes. How do they know that this isn't, in fact, the only possible universe? How do they know that the mechanisms by which universes come into being can produce anything other than the universe that we're living in. They have to assume that there are other possibilities in order to calculate odds other than 100%. You see, we don't know enough about the universe and how it was formed to be able to make a determination about what other universes are actually possible. What other universes can be produced by the mechanism because we don't fully understand that mechanism. What if we live in something like a multiverse? Maybe there are billions upon billions of universes where there are intelligent beings attempting to calculate the odds that a universe like theirs would come into existence, and they're all making the same fundamental mistake. 
and that is that their universe is the only favorable result, when in reality there are billions of universes that are the favorable results, that produce intelligent life capable of asking the question, what are the odds that a universe could exist that would produce me? Moreover, since we can't actually calculate the number of possible universes, and we don't know enough about the mechanism to determine which universes could be possible and how likely they are, we can't calculate the probabilities, but that is a separate issue from what's actually going on here. Let's say that the intelligent design proponents were actually able to calculate this. No matter what number they come up with, all they're really saying is that the odds of a universe like ours coming into existence by natural means is so incredibly improbable that it's more probable that the universe came into existence by supernatural means. How do they calculate that? How did you determine the probability of supernatural means? If we're going to calculate the probability of something based on the possible outcomes and its, and its relationship to the favorable outcomes, how many possible supernatural causes do we know of? None. How could you ever say that a supernatural cause is more probable than a natural one? No matter how improbable it seems, it's still on firmer footing than a supernatural cause. So what about life? Whether we're talking about abiogenesis, the rise of living matter from non-living matter, or the diversity of life that we find surrounding us and in us that we are a part of, how do we explain all this? Argument from design proponents are attempting to calculate the odds that naturalistic explanations are sufficient to explain both the origin and diversity of life. And it should be obvious from the outset that these calculations are going to suffer from the same fatal flaw that the calculations with respect to the origin of the universe suffered from. And that is, no matter how improbable it seems, they haven't demonstrated that their supernatural explanation is even possible, let alone probable. But let's take a look at some of the specific claims that they make about the origins of life and some other mistakes in their calculations. So what do the intelligent design proponents have to say about the origin and diversity of life? What are the odds? Well, I want to look at a single example, and that's the formation of protein structures. Now, you're going to find many different numbers in many different places, especially if you do a Google search for the odds of protein structures forming. Sometimes you'll hear something like the odds are 1 in 10 to the 113th power. I don't care what calculation they've come up with. We've already addressed that improbability does not mean impossibility. I'd rather look at their initial assumptions that led to that calculation. Because what they're really saying is that the odds of a modern complex protein structure forming in a single trial by blind chance is 1 in 10 to the 113th or whatever their calculation is. But every single one of their assumptions seems suspect at best, if not outright wrong. Why did you calculate the odds for a modern complex protein structure? Well, I think it's because if you begin by calculating the odds of a simpler protein structure that could then evolve into a more complex structure, you're accepting the theory of evolution by natural selection, and that's something that they just won't do. If your goal is to undermine an existing scientific model, you've got a lot of work to do. But if you have a competing model and you throw out everything that might lead you to the other conclusion, you are now engaged in a biased pursuit of an explanation. You are asserting that evolution by natural selection did not happen, could not happen, and you're attempting to prove that. And in doing so, you're ignoring some of the observations that led to that conclusion. In addition to the idea that they have to address modern complex proteins, they also address this idea that it's a single trial happening by pure chance. Why did they make those assumptions? Well, they love to mock the primordial soup, the primordial ooze idea, which is nothing more than a recognition that a pool of chemicals represents the opportunity for countless trials, not a single trial, countless simultaneous trials. This mixing process allows for so many trials that it really damages their odds calculations. 
And the last element of this is this claim that it's blind chance. Well, the laws of the universe dictate how things interact. The physical laws, the laws of biochemistry, those aren't chance. Proteins and molecules and atoms, the interactions between them are dictated by the physical laws of the universe. And so what they're really saying is roughly the equivalent of, oh, in order to get this protein, we need these two chemical structures. And let's just go ahead and say that one of them is in galaxy A and one of them is in galaxy B, and therefore the odds of them ever getting together are vanishingly small. I mean, they can't do that because it would be obvious. So instead, they do the calculations and they kind of fudge on the assumptions that they make. Modern complex proteins, single trial, blind chance, none of that matches up with how we understand the universe and how we understand how life arose. We don't have an explanation, we don't have a good understanding of abiogenesis, but we're working on it. And there's no reason to assume that a supernatural cause is possible, let alone probable, until such thing has been demonstrated. Last night I was at a church in Kyle to watch a kind of a hell house type of play, uh, a bunch of little vignettes of people living their life without Jesus and then coming to Jesus or not, and they would send them to hell, and it was just a confusing mess. But before it started, the preacher got up at the beginning and said that he doesn't believe in evolution because he believes that we're created in God's image and he just can't imagine God as a monkey. He's demonstrated a couple of biases there. He, first of all, is accepting what the Bible has to say and accepting that we're made in God's image. But this idea that God's image is not monkey is an invention of his own head. How does he know that God's image is not monkey? How does he know that God didn't work within the bounds of natural selection or tinker? After all, there are people of religious beliefs, including Christianity, who have no problem at all accepting these things because they can pick and choose. The intelligent design proponents are seeking to find some foundation for their claim that a God exists. And in doing so, they want to seem legitimate. They want to do calculations. They want to do science. The problem is that all of their calculations are based on biased assumptions that preclude the possibility of the currently accepted explanation. If you want to disprove evolution, that's not the way to go about it. You don't disregard all of the observations that were used to demonstrate the likelihood of life evolving by natural selection. You have to actually explain those observations and you have to provide evidence for your proposed counter mechanism. And that's something that they just don't do. So as I noted at the outset of this video, you don't have to be a mathematician and you don't have to be particularly good at mathematics or calculations to have a good understanding of the foundations of the modern versions of the argument from design. The mathematical machinations of the intelligent design community tend to be more along the lines of confusion than explanation. And as we've already seen when trying to calculate the odds of a universe coming into existence, we simply don't have enough information. There's some foundational methodological mistakes in the intelligent design community's attempts to calculate the odds of a universe arising. You just don't have enough information. And the same is true when we start talking about the origins of life. But there they go a step further and they misunderstand or misrepresent the way the universe works. It's incredibly ironic that in the argument for design, an argument that comes from the perception of order and purpose, the observation of the mostly deterministic methods by which the universe works, that they want to throw all of that out and pretend that every time chemicals we get together and they don't produce a result, well, we've got to start all over from scratch. They are intentionally avoiding the obvious conclusion of evolution by natural selection. It is something that they, they dismiss out of hand in order to make a, an appeal to incredibly long odds in order to justify their belief that a God exists. What are the odds that a God exists? At least when we're trying to calculate the odds of a universe, we have one good example of a universe that we know of. We have no good example of a God. 
how do you calculate the gods when the number of possible outcomes isn't known to be anything other than zero? Don't you get the divide by zero error there? What they're doing is trying to claim that because something is so incredibly improbable that it is therefore impossible by natural means and that this means there must be some supernatural means to achieve this even if they have no examples and no way to demonstrate that a supernatural agent actually exists or could exist or that some cause outside of nature is possible. So they're taking an incredible improbability, declaring it a virtual impossibility, and then claiming that they can resolve this impossibility by appealing to something that they cannot demonstrate is even possible. If you can't demonstrate that it's even possible, then the probability is essentially zero. And so when the mathematics of the intelligent design movement are presented to you and all of these incredibly long numbers and outrageous odds and they want to claim that it's just absurd to think that something this improbable could have occurred. Ask them what the odds are that their God exists and how do they go about calculating that. This video is made possible by supporters of the Atheist Debates Patreon project. You can find more information and add your support by visiting patreon.com slash atheistdebates.